In a project with ShotCN, I needed a text input with autocomplete, data coming from the backend, and also some kind of keyboard control. It is not just a simple select because I also needed the text input. It is also not a combo box because sure the text here is working fine, but I needed it always visible here. And also data has to come directly from the backend. Here it is our coded, but it's maybe not the biggest issue. So I did some researches and the first places I basically stumbled upon were issues on the ShotCI repository with really like this one, a lot of other examples and discussions, which in the end led me to this working demo that is doing pretty much everything I needed. And also the code is available on GitHub. And this has been really a great starting point to my own implementation. That is actually part of the Shazian philosophy, I suppose, that you own your components. So you're free to look at other examples and then make your own. And now let's have a look at my implementation. Data is obviously coming from Tasta Query, making sure that every time my search value changes, I get fresh Pokemons. And this other query here is not actually mandatory. I just wanted to do something else with the data coming from the autocomplete. So every time I select a value, I also display nicely the Pokemon details. But this isn't really something you need. For our autocomplete, I also log here a few values that are the selected value, the search value, and the loading state. But let's have a look at the autocomplete implementation. First of all, you're gonna need from ShotCN the command component, and also input, popover, and skeleton. Then let's have a look at the props. Here I wanted a fully controlled component, so I'm passing props for both the selected value and the search value that is the text on the input. But you might also make a similar version with uncontrolled inputs. You obviously need the items coming from the outside and optionally a loading state, an empty message and a custom placeholder. In the component logic, you will find that there isn't really much apart from the open state, an object holding the labels and actually two tiny bits of logic. First of all is that when I blur, so I click outside of the input, if I'm clicking on the list, then nothing happens. But if I'm clicking outside and the search value is different from the select one, I want to reset. So this is the example. If I'm tapping something and I click on a Pokemon name, then I get the selected value. But if I change the search value and I click outside, I want the value to be reset. And same goes if I click on a value. And if I click again on the same, Again, I want it to be reset. And that's exactly this piece of code when I click outside and this other piece of code when I click on an item. I basically want to reset if I click twice on the same item. Everything else is really composing the primitives coming from ShotCN. With the key feature you have to make sure you don't get wrong is this should filter false on the command. I wasted quite some time because command is actually having a filter by default and you can also override it if you want. It is using another library to filter your values, but if you want data being filtered from the outside, from your backend, you obviously have to tell a command to stop filtering your items. And also in case you want to use this component from both filter from the backend or filter locally, this instead of hard coding false, may be a prop you're passing from the outside. And last but not least, I obviously wrote some tests. I can run them here and they're basically covering some of the most important aspects of this component. For example, that the two control values are properly changed, that the selection is cleared when clicking the same item, when clicking outside, and also displaying the skeleton loading and the empty message when there are no more items. So these are not covering all possible scenarios, I know, but at least the most important cases are here. So let's go back here and have a closer look at how it works. If I refresh the page, you see that the loading state goes through for the first time because it is already preloading the first list of the first 20 entries. As I type, you will find here the skeleton appearing. Let me show you. So as I type, you have the skeleton and when the data comes, the skeleton disappears. I also have all the control from the keyboard here. I'm just pressing the arrows and I can select a Pokemon and I can again by pressing enter twice deselect my option. And like I said, it has been really easy to hook some extra logic to react on selected values. So here, every time I select a value, I call another API getting the Pokemon detail. And this is what you're seeing here all the time. This is coming from something that is triggered 
only when something changes here in the input. And actually it reacts to the selected value and not to the search value. So the search value you can see here is the same text that is in the input, while the selected value is the actual item on the array. And it is not the label, but the actual value. One thing I noticed is that when I select an item and I remove it by clicking again here in the entry, it flickers for a second. Let me show you. You see? And I haven't found the actual reason, to be honest. So if you want to investigate, the code is obviously on GitHub. Feel free to have a look at the code. You can obviously use it in your project. You can make it better. And also feel free to raise an issue or a PR if you have some suggestions. The link of the repository is obviously down in the description. And also, if you know about other autocomplete components, please let me know in the comments. And with that said, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.